Welcome to page 14 of your probability packet. On this page, we will use tree diagrams to list all possible outcomes, all possible outcomes to events that are going to occur. We'll also be taking a look at the fundamental counting principle. This little rule is going to help us calculate the number of outcomes that are going to occur. Sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as the FCP rule, since it's such a mouthful to say over and over again. Let's take a look at a situation where we might have to look at all the possible outcomes. Sue is going to flip a coin and spin a spinner. Let's take a look at what we've been given. If you look at the coin, you know there are two possible outcomes. And even though we can't see tails, we know it's there. Underneath the coin, can you draw a little oval? And in that oval, we're going to represent our pool of elements. For a coin, you could flip a heads or a tails. And for our spinner, we can clearly see all of our outcomes, but I'd like you to make it a habit of drawing your pool of elements. You could spin an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, or an F. So, we have basically two events. The first event is the flipping of the coin, and the second event is the spinning of the spinner. So, step one, which should come first, determine the number of events. We have two, we did that. Next, create a pool of elements for each event. We did that when we drew our little ovals underneath each object. Now, apply FCP, or the Fundamental Counting Principle. It's a simple little rule that states, if you take the elements from the per first pool, which there are two of them, and you multiply them by the number of elements in the second pool, there are six of them. If you multiply those two values together, you get 12, and 12 represents the number of possible outcomes we could get as we flip this coin and spin this spinner. For example, you could get heads and the letter A on the spinner, or heads and the letter F. You could get T and the letter B on the spinner, or T for tails and the letter C. But just randomly listing outcomes is not very organized. We know there's going to be 12, but how do we come up with an organized list? Well, step four, we're going to use a tree diagram to construct an organized list. Here's how you construct a tree diagram. Grab the two elements in the first pool, which happens to be H for heads and T for tails. And let's list those vertically, heads or tails. Next, let's look at the second event, since we've taken care of the first event, and look at the elements in that pool. Let's work with heads and the elements from the second pool first. You could get heads and spin an A, heads and spin a B, or a C, and so on, a D, an E, or an F. So, as we make an organized list, you could get heads in A, heads in B, heads in C, heads in D, heads and E, and a heads on the coin, and an F on the spinner. Those are your six possible outcomes beginning with an H or heads. But now, let's consider tails. What happens if you get a tails on the coin? You could 
you could have tails with A, tails in B, tails in C, D, E, and F. Let's take that tree diagram and make a list of outcomes beginning with tails. Tails in A, tails in B, tails in C, tails in D, tails in E, tails in F. Of course, there are six beginning with tails as well. Based on this list, which was our ultimate goal to get to the list, which you have here, you can see all the outcomes and you can answer some probability questions. For example, out of the 12 possible outcomes, what's the probability of getting a heads on the coin and a not B on the spinner? Well, you know you have 12 possible outcomes. You can see that in your list. But how many of them are heads with a not B result? Well, this is heads and not B. So is this, so is this, so is this, and so is this. Circle those five outcomes. You have a five out of 12 chance of getting heads and a not B. Let's take a look at some of the problems we've been given below. We are asked to list all possible outcomes for these two different cases. It states, Kate is going to flip a coin twice. Now there are two events or two actions here, even though we see just one coin. So we have the first event, which is the first flip, and the second event, which is the second flip. We need to draw a pool of elements for each event. Even though we only have one coin, we know there are two events flipping the coin twice. In the first pool, we could get a heads or a tails. In the second pool, we could also get heads or tails. So step two, draw your pool of elements and identify the different elements in each pool. Step three, let's use the fundamental counting principle. Two elements times two elements or outcomes gives us four possible outcomes for the two flips. Now take the elements in the first pool and let's write them vertically. We could get a heads or a tail on the first flip. Now consider the second pool of elements. If the first is a heads, we could get heads with a heads or heads with a tails. And the same thing is true down here with tails. Our first flip is tails. We could get tails with a heads or tails with a tails. So now let's use that tree to finish up an organized list. We could get heads and heads. We could get heads and tails. We could get tails and heads. Or lastly, tails and tails. We have finished our list of outcomes. You can see there are four possible outcomes for these two events. Finally, let's move on to this problem. Barb is going to flip a coin and spin a spinner. Now, our first event, let's say that's going to be the spinner. Our second event, the flipping of the coin. We have two events. In this pool of elements, please draw this, we could spin an A, a B, a C, or a D. 
For the coin, we could flip heads or tails. Step three, four times two means that there are eight possible outcomes for these two events. Let's construct a tree diagram and then create an organized list. Look at your first pool of elements and list those elements vertically. For our first event, we could get an A, B, C, or D. But let's take a look at our second event. You could flip a heads or a tails. So you could get A with heads, A with tails, B with heads, B with tails, C with heads, C with tails, or spin a D with heads and then a D with tails. Once you complete your tree, make your organized list. A with H, A with T, B with H, B with T. Check, 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 check. C and H, check. C with T, check. D and H, D and T. There are your eight possible outcomes. That is your ultimate goal, to list all possible outcomes. Please turn the page and continue practicing tree diagrams and listing all outcomes.